Hello and welcome back. This is exercise number two of problem sheet number five. Here we are investigating the representations of SO3, namely D0, D1 and D2, and how these uh, representations decompose in the presence of C3V symmetry. This is going to be a really long video and it's going to be hard to follow, but bear with me, it's going to be worth it. Okay. Just a quick reminder, C3V, we already discussed it in thorough detail, it consists out of these three conjugacy classes. Um, just as an example here, we have two elements and how the coordinates uh, transform as a permutation, C3 to the minus one, for example, here, and a sigma Z, the, the mirror plane over here. Here is the character table for C3V, and we already filled that out, and you should know how you deduce that. In the lecture, you already did use, uh, uh, derived the basis functions for your d0, d1, and d2 representation. For d0, you have only the one, number one. For d1, you have x, y, and z. And for d2, you have x squared minus y squared, 2z squared minus r squared, x, y, x, z, and y, z. This is the setting, and now we're uh, now we're uh, moving on and fill out this character table right here and this is how it goes. Okay, D0 is a one-dimensional representation so we can fill in ones over here. D1, uh, the representation of D1 is already discussed in exercise number one and when you look at it you see it's three-dimensional, the matrix U has no elements on the diagonal and the mirror plane is of course with uh, character 1. The difficult part is now to uh, to derive the characters for the three different conjugacy classes for the D2 representations. And we do that by looking at how the uh, how the basis vectors transform. For example, we apply sigma z on the basis function x squared minus y squared. And if you look at how these uh, coordinates transform, we end up seeing that this is minus x squared minus y squared. Sigma z on 2z squared minus r squared. r squared is nothing else than x squared plus y squared. Here we see that this remains invariant, minus x squared minus y squared. Sigma z on xy transforms to xy. Sigma z on y z transforms to x z, sigma z of x z transforms to y z. So what we do here is we look well the y transforms to the x and the z transforms to the z. So this is how you arrive at these. Now we can we can uh, build uh, we can build a matrix representation for d two of o uh, sigma z and this is nothing else than writing down uh, what we what you recognize over here. Here you see this vector transform into the same basis vector but with a minus sign. This vector transform into the same basis vector. Over here it also transforms into the same vector, basis vector. And here they exchange. But the important thing is that the there are zeros on the diagonal. And we s can uh, read out now the character out of this matrix representation and we see we see that the uh, character for this conjugacy class in the D2 representation is 1. Let's move on. Uh, let's look at how the uh, the C3 to the minus 1, for example, transforms x squared minus y squared. We look into the details and recognize this is z squared minus x squared. C3 to the minus 1 of to z squared minus r squared ends up being 2y squared minus z squared minus x squared. The rest x, y, y, z and x, z transform into each other so we don't bother with them again. Now here again a uh, little more uh, little difficulty here is to recognize how this basis vector consists out of these two. Well, you see that if you take one half minus one half of this basis vector 
and add one half of this basis vector, you end up at with z squared minus x squared. If you can't follow this explanation, please go back, stop the video and do the calculation by yourself. It's very important that you understand this step. Pause now if you don't get it. Okay, you got it? Let's move on. Here, how does this basis vector transform? Okay, well, you see that we take minus three halves of this basis vector and you uh, subtract again one half of this basis vector to end up having this guy over here. Again, the other three have zeros on the diagonal and you can conclude that therefore uh, the character of the D2 representation in this conjugacy class is minus one. The dimensionality of D2 is five dimensional because we have five basis vectors. So here we have a five. Here we go. So what we have now is the uh, characters of our representations D0, D1 and D2. D0 is nothing else than uh, lambda one. With the decomposition theorem, you can see that d1 is nothing else than lambda 1 plus lambda 3. And again, with the decomposition theorem, you can deduce that d2 is lambda 1 plus 2 times a lambda 3. So, what do you have? Well, as you might remember, these d0, d1 and d2 representations correspond to the s orbital, to the p orbital and to the d orbital. And now you see that in the presence of C3V symmetry, you arrive with the S orbital in the lambda one representation. The P orbital splits and you get lambda three and lambda one. And the D orbital splits three times and you get lambda, uh, lambda three, lambda three and lambda one. Again, group theory only gives you the number of irreducible representation it it's decomposed into but not the energy of these two so you don't know just out of group theory which one is above and below you have to do measurements to find out that uh, lambda 3 has a higher energy than lambda 1. So this is how SO3 the orbitals of SO3 transform in the uh, presence of C3V symmetry. At the next step, we want to project the basis functions over here into the subspace of uh, uh, the irreducible representations right here. So the, the, the aim is here to know which, uh, which polynomials of x, y and z live in which of these representations. So the easiest thing first, we project into lambda 1 our basis uh, function 1. And this is of course one. We don't know. We don't need to know anything about that. That's obvious. But uh, here, for example, if we take x and we project it into lambda one, we arrive at uh, x plus y plus z. Okay, maybe this was a bit too fast. I go a little more thorough on the next one. So, p of uh, the projection of uh, x y into lambda one gives you x, y, this is the identity. Then you have plus because the character is plus and then how they transform according to C3. So according to C3, they transform to Z, Y. According to C3 to the minus one to Y, Z. Then you have for the, uh, for the mirror planes, you have, uh, do, 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 do. you have Y, X plus Z, Y plus X, Z. Now you see that this is uh, proportional to x y plus z y plus x z. So here you have the polynomials which are uh, which live in the uh, lambda one irreducible representation. We can do the same thing for so we have here lambda one. We can do the same thing for lambda three. For example, we see how the our x projects into lambda 3 and we see that this arrives at 2x minus z minus y. And because of symmetry y and z transform very similarly and we arrive at 2y minus x minus z 
and to z minus x minus y, which live in the same uh, irreducible representation in the yeah. So next step is we take uh, x squared minus y squared and a short calculation yields that this is again x squared minus y squared and to z squared minus r squared stay in the same stay in the same uh, stay in the same irreducible representation as well because it's uh, 2z squared minus r squared and the last uh, thing we we have to check is how do how does uh, x y transform and here we see this is 2x y minus z x minus y z again by the same argument uh, as above we conclude that uh, similarly we also have the other vectors in this uh, in this uh, irreducible representation, namely to z x minus y z minus x y. Okay, so the polynomials living in lambda three are these three, these two, and these two. We didn't have to check this one living in uh, lambda one because it is completely in lambda 3 and we didn't have to check this one living in lambda 3 because it's completely in lambda 1. This is it. It was a little uh, long, I know, but I hope you bore, uh, you bore with, me, with me and I hope you learned something. If you have any questions concerning the details of this calculation, or how this works, and just send me an email. And if, if or th there are many people asking, I do a separate video again on this because I believe this was a little too quick. But I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.